Well, joining me now, uh, Abdullah Yakasai, who is the Senior Special Advisor to President Tinubu on Community Engagement and Lawyer and uh, Arise Analyst Frank Tietia. Yakasai is not a lawyer. I'm not a lawyer. Okay, so when I say lawyer, I'm talking about uh, Frank, Frank Tietia, just to be clear on that. Yakasai, let's uh, start with you. I mean, you're Special Advisor to the Government. Senior or, Special Advisor. Senior Special Advisor assistant. on Community Engagement. This is your turf. This is where the Nigerian youth really should be filling your office. First of all, government continues to plead with Nigerians not to go on protest, pleading with Nigerian youth, but it will take a lot more than just pleading with them, wouldn't it? Well, uh, thank you for having me. You see, honestly, we are just one year, Mr. President is just one year in office. Mm -hmm. And he has taken the bull by the horn through policies and programs he has initiated, which will manifest over time. It's too early. That is why the issue of uh, we are saying people should hold on, people should be patient. That's why we're appealing for people on that. Because some of the programs will come to fruition after a little while. People are saying there's hunger in the land. Yes, there's hunger in the land. We know. But have people gotten to know what Mr. President is doing in terms of uh, providing uh, food security in That's the nation? That's the point. If the president, if this government is really doing much in terms yes. of uh, providing food security and all other concerns that are being put on the table, don't you think Nigerians, Nigerian youth, and Nigerians as a whole would be feeling it? That's the what I'm saying. The positive impact you of see, You see, when he comes in, when he came initially, after the subsidy, I keep saying this, Mr. President gave the state governors, the subnationals, funding so that they will, it will trickle down whatever social programs the governors have, whatever challenges we have in terms of food security, mm. the governors need to step in and do a lot. We have done so much on agriculture, which I think I need to highlight here. Mm. Because... On dry farming season alone, Nigeria has cultivated 118,657 hectares of wheat across 15 states. Not all the states. Mm -hmm. They have supported 107,429 farmers, and it resulted in 474, 628 metric tons of wheat, worth estimated 309 billion mm -hmm. to add to the economy. Just recently, Mr. President has directed, which the Honorable Minister of Information mm -hmm. mentioned last week, that each state governor has gotten 20 trucks of uh, grains to distribute to the people at the community level. These are all uh, 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 programs of Mr. President in terms of food security. So I right. think... I think uh, uh, people just need to be patient with him. Within one year, he has done this. There are other critical sectors that he has touched, which I think in the course of our discussion I will mention. Hopefully we can, though this is not exactly a forum to talk about some of the policies that have been put in place. Uh, Frank Tete, Nigerians, Nigerian youth especially, are saying, look, things cannot just go on like this. You heard Yakasai there. He says government has put you know, some policies in place uh, you know, the results may not come as quickly as expected, but they are in the works. Your thoughts? Yeah, well, within one year, and in fact, in the week, the president uh, removed subsidy, and then with less than uh, one year, he floated the Naira. And the Nigerians saw, imme Nigerians saw immediate hardship. They didn't need, the president was not patient in instituting reforms. And Nigerians are not, especially poor Nigerians at this time, are not interested in the semantics of uh, certain figures and uh, uh, certain programs that have been done that don't translate to anything but only hardship, that it is palpable. All they know is that the bag of rice used to cost a certain amount of money, maybe 35000 and now over 80000 And they've seen this uh, spiraling inflation every day. The price of things going up, things unreachable, and then all they hear about is that uh, maybe the president is buying a new jet or uh, 
members of the National Assembly are buying new SUVs from Japan and all that. So the, 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 the Nigerians just want, I have a sense that it seems as if those who operate government are deaf or they are blind. So they want to go out and let them register their protest. Perhaps they will know that. Now, the, this government is even lucky that uh, certain persons are giving a notice that they want to go on strike on August 1. The, the kind of Let's the, even the, talk about that. Those yeah, they go on a, a protest outside. Yeah. I, the, the, Look, look, let me tell you the truth. Mm. Though the, the, this government is unnecessarily afraid. They shouldn't be. They should have be afraid of the kind of thing that happened in the course of the Arab Spring, when a man poured a petrol on himself and lit himself on it's fire easier. because he felt that, look, this whole thing, so for hardship is too much. And then that thing triggered all sort of protests across the entire Arab region. And then we saw a regime change and all, a lot of that. But this one, you have full notice. Some person is telling you that hungry, your hunger, hunger will kill us. Like they say, the Yoruba, they told they the power. president they want to kill us yeah. and all that. So, mm. so at that point, so they should, and, and I, there's the continued disconnection be, and then, uh, not only from the yearnings of the people, but even from reality. And to now be thinking that you're not fishing for those who are behind the protest or planned protest, and then you name uh, evil Peter Obi as if his shadow is carrying them, who the man who is looking for the next recorded uh, borehole to go and commission, or maybe trying to help one person with one small amount of money for medical support. So uh, the, the man, uh, they are now accusing him of the one behind protest for what? And now he's suing them for five billion. I think yeah. we, they sh the, this government must come to terms with the fact that, and I'm happy that there is no need to go into the jurisprudence of the right to protest. They have acknowledged this, the general police has acknowledged it, the president himself has acknowledged it. Mm -hmm. What they don't uh, realize is that there is a wave. They need to understand the psycho, psycho, uh, social you know, dynamics of protest. There is a wave of protest growing around Africa at this mm -hmm. time. You can see the palpable fear gripping you wearing Mr. Veni. You threatening to kill people if they dare to protest. You could see what happened in Kenya. And that, uh, but you see, protest, those who are engaging in protest must have measurable demand. So you could see that it succeeded to a large extent in Kenya. And William Ruto came to terms with the reality that, look, yeah. no matter how nice or well the finance bill would, uh, could be, he had to withdraw it. So it, Nigerians have a right to protest. They have a right to tell the president that, look, you're failing and you've got to do so, things. Yakasai, okay. shouldn't government really be taking concrete steps in terms of responding to what these demands are? These are what yeah. I'm beginning to analyze for you. But the steps the government taken, is talking uh, more about I want to, I want to know, address one issue Mr. Billion. Frank raised. Right. Truly, nobody is afraid of uh, peaceful protest. Mm -hmm. But what we are saying is some people want to hijack this protest so that they destabilize this country. Be it for the fact that is it not the job maybe of because they've lost and security, election or the something? The security, we don't know. Hold on. One. Yes, I, two. Is it not the job of the security uh, Ugozi, forces? Ugozi, hold on. Land. Hold on. Okay. The job of the security forces to fish out these people who government believes, you know, would want to take advantage of this uh, protest and destabilize the system. We even heard a minister say that Nigeria may never recover, you know, from uh, protests. Let me give you an instance. The protest that took place in Kenya. Yeah. The president has reversed that uh, government policy, but the protest is still on. This is mm -hmm. what we are saying. Mm -hmm. If so long as people are coming out, the Honorable Minister of Information said it that if there is is the fundamental right of citizens to protest. Right. But in the course of doing the protest, some people are behind in, uh, 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 hiding behind this protest so that maybe because they feel the president uh, has started on the right track on a good footing. Some of these challenges you've mentioned have been who there are those way people? before. I mean, who are these people? It seems are more opposition, a really? part of it. Yes, uh, those the the can the the bishops that went to had the had meeting. They said some people called them, have been calling them to join this. Why should you call some people to join strike? Why don't you on your own go on your own strike? Why are you calling people instigating religious leaders to join the strike? Is, is, not good is for anything this fundamentally what, wrong with what asking peace, others to what join? What peace in? did not bring Ngozi? Right. Mm. Violence will never bring it either. So let's allow the government of His Excellency President Aswaji Bola Metunibu continue with these reforms. So many things have gone the reforms, bad in the country. Nigerians are saying these reforms are hurting Nigerians, and there's no yes, indication that these reforms we are we're, better we're, than we're used to, we're, the we're, we're used to government subsidizing for. Once you remove that subsidy, yes, inflation will set in. 
But gradually, gradually, just recently, last week, Mr. President said borders should be open for grains, food commodities. Mm. These are all signs of things to come uh, in the better perspective. But how far-reaching are some of these policies? I mean, are they just not tokenism? Uh, it's not tokenism. It's not tokenism. What kind uh, of engagement? Okay. What kind of engagement do you think government should be having now beyond just pleading with the, Nigerians the, the, not the, to go the on protest? The government protests? should play to the gallery of the people. The people own this country. Sovereignty of this country belongs to the people. Mm. And the, the people are telling Mr. President, you, you didn't do a good job by removing subsidies. It was the only way we could get the benefits, the dividends of democracy. Yeah. And if you must remove it, you should have done it in such an informed and tactical manner and not to cause this kind of untold hardship. Now, imagine the president taking, a, you know, on the first day of office, taking that 100 degrees, uh, I mean, 360 degrees decision. You know, you know, he's expected to take that same 360 degrees decision by doing something fundamental something you know you know at shaking and, and only that can assuage nigerians and let me tell you i can't now i can't yeah. emphasize this enough that mm -hmm. the, uh, those good nigerians who are exercising their rights have put this government on notice i don't know them i wonder what, if you know them name them because you've named peter b now and the, the, it's, it's, it's been it's, it's baseless yeah, May when, the point you. the point let is me, this let, let me give you if the pre if okay, if, if, the if they don't take this opportunity that nigerians now give them they, and then they are able to do the usual thing, as Femi, Femi Falana has said, that, it, look, this fear of government people hijacking protests is actually government sponsoring and uh, counter-protesters. Yeah, and that's I according to Femi Falana. This seems, seems you know? to be an so, age-old so, fear. So, Hold on, yes. Frank. It seems to be an age-old fear on the part of government, even before this current administration. There's always that fear, the concern that, you know, people... Uh, some uh, who may not like the present government, you know, may want to take advantage of uh, the protests. You see, everywhere there is protest, there are some bad elements right. in the organization. Mm -hmm. So these bad eggs are what we're trying to caution Nigerians to be wary of. Is the police. Let me tell you, uh, Ngozi, from the beginning, judicial workers, their remuneration has been upgraded. The health workers... The, the, the civil servants have gotten 70000 They are okay. They said they are comfortable. The students have gotten student loan. The uh, youth have 110 uh, investment scheme. Billion Naira. Billion Naira. Mm. There's another 100 billion for uh, small-scale uh, business, MS, MSMEs. This, uh, which sector is it Mr. President has not in one year? supported by no matter the margin. Yeah, but these uh, policies, Everybody look, has they look touched. good on paper. There are 15 in, million in reality, Nigerians to in benefit. In reality, how is it impacting on the lives of Nigerians? Because 15 million people are getting stipends from government on this conditional cash transfer. As we speak. As we speak. 15 million. 15 million Nigerians. Mm -hmm. And it will be going as the country is getting, getting more money. Right. And then we also talk about the 100 billion that is in the budget for school feeding. Mm -hmm. So children have been touched, le lecturers have been touched, students have been touched. Who is it in this country that has not been touched? In today's meeting, there was uh, the, about the 40 power, ministers. Power hold, on. Sector. hold on, because we don't have much time. We need to just maximize No, I, I need Barely to make minute. some clarifications. The, I, because I, I, I wanted to address the issue of ministers. About 40 of them had this meeting today yes. uh, with the SGF. Yes. Is there a need for the government to begin to look, uh, the, the president, to begin to look in the direction of the ministers to say, look, you guys may not be delivering. It's time to boot you Mr. out. Mr. President has said it from day one mm -hmm. that there's... We, all these ministers have signed a performance bond, if you have not forgotten, that if you are not performing, you might be kicked out. And that's not happening. It will. How soon is that likely to happen? I don't know. I'm not the spokesman. I, I am not a minister. I'm not part of the cabinet. But I'm an aide. But is the president but I'm getting, I, is he I getting tell you feedback if from the President Aswaji Bola Metinibu says something, mm -hmm. he means it. Right. I'm sure by now, because the report is meant to be submitted to him after a year. I'm sure by now is on his table, and he will get to it. Frank Tete, last all one. of these Shouldn't things he mentions, uh, are the thi sector. all the things he's mentioning, to on are the things that are actually are no, no, no. These are the things the student actually loan, the getting Nigerians very angry. You mentioned all these humongous amounts, and nothing translates in reality. How does that help the tomato seller, uh, tomato seller in the market who can't actually get uh, produce to sell and then feed uh, his or her family? They are getting let me tell, no, no, they are not getting anything. Look, they are let getting me tell input. No, you see, maybe you let, don't know. Let, no, no, no. I need to. I allowed you to say. I allowed you to say your your point. The point is. 
this. Okay. President Bola Tinubu has simply foisted untold hardship worse than the days of uh, uh, Muhammad Buhari. And Nigerians just can't understand. And they want to tell you because it appears that apart from the failing ministers, which you are now going to use as scapegoat, the president obviously made a mistake in the way he floated the Naira, in the way he removed subsidies, and he has not tackled, he has not made government directly responsible to the people in right. terms of welfare and security. He, I mean, how can we continue to record worse times? The, the days of uh, Muhammad Buhari, things were bad, and then Tinubu has come, things are getting worse. Frank Nigerians need to just... Uh, definitely. Better. And, okay. and it's, it's a battle on the street. It's, Please, not, it's a word on the street, and not necessarily in 30 uh, seconds. Uh, an in 30 in 30 seconds. Seconds. Yeah. You see, this issue of subsidy, every Nigerian agreed subsidy must go. It was because Mr. President has the confidence. Because there was so much lies. And because he has it. the capacity. But, um, no, no, that was Nigerians why he removed it from the world. Clear, okay. clear understanding of we'll what have to live is. And, and, that, and that government has you actually presided over corruption all with this, regards to the issue of subsidy. Nigerians just want to be let free. All they have on bondage right now. All these programs I can't keep quiet and allow this, you know, this, you know, on the young man. It's wrong. All these programs I told you. Are you not aware they are going? Has he not given the, the right the prices of uh, and not begin to lie and then has he not increased the prices of civil oh, servants? And I will say this on behalf of Nigerians so that they can defuse the tension and not threaten people all over the place. Right. Who is threatening who? Oh, that they want to arrest and that Nigerians have, they cannot protest. We said and are being afraid that's of... They have, right. they have right to protest. And then you, you are threatening much. them that bandits will take over the protest. Thank you very much, Abdullahi <laughs> Senior Special Assistant to the President on Community Engagement. And of course, Frank Tete, lawyer and the rising analyst. It's a continuing conversation, gentlemen.